Hi, I'm Brett Stevenson with Augusta Mortgage. Uh, I do all types of mortgages, first, seconds, forwards, reverses. I do have some expertise in reverse mortgages that are really good for the senior community. I go through it step by step. I make sure that you understand what's going on. I don't want you to just ever just trust me. I want to educate you so that you understand what you're doing and it's a decision that you want to make. I don't think that it's ever good to just push something on somebody, even if it maybe is the best thing for them, because at the end of the day, they're the ones that have got to sleep with it at night, so to speak. So I just do all that I can to be a resource. And even after the closing, even after it's over, I want you to call me two years from now when you have a question and go, hey, Brett, I don't get this. Explain it to me. Because that's what I'm all about is creating relationships as well as making sure people understand what they're doing and what they're getting into as well as I do. I, I appreciate that introduction, by the way. See, you're doing a good job. See, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let people know. He, he's a little nervous, guys. He was just like... I don't know if I can do this. And he just, he just nailed it. So like I said, we're going to send him an Oscar from the Academy Awards in the mail. But, um, <laughs> but, but the thing I've noticed is, yeah, I think a lot of, I think lending has changed a lot, obviously, since the recession. Um, it's changed a lot just in the past year or two where so many people have got out of the business right. and I think lending will continue to change. And, and I know kind of what we'll end up talking about today is the reverse mortgage. I would say when I first got into the senior area of business, I was about 100% against reverses, just like a lot of people. Right, but right. being, you know, the shifting demographics, the reality is a lot of people are going to use them because they're going to be forced to stay in place. Um, the right. FHA HECM, I think, is a better option than what used to exist in years past. Right. And I'm curious for your thoughts on this. There's still a small amount of people that have them. But their demand is growing, and there's right. not a lot of lenders that specialize in it. But you have right. lenders and banks that are like, oh, yeah, we do, and we do, and we do them. Do you think that it is important to specialize in it as opposed to just saying, oh, it's on my menu of 30 other loans I can right. get, for example? What, what's your opinion on that? Oh, most definitely. I mean, just to kind of go back a little bit with what you said and how things have changed a lot. Yeah, I've been around for 30 years. I mean, in August of this year, it'll be 30 years. So lending is not new to me by any means. You know, as, as far as specializing in them, specializing in them is knowing them well enough to explain them to somebody, you know, and knowing the ins and outs of the reverse mortgage. Because they're not, I always say, if lending was easy, they would do it at Walmart, you know, but you can get your taxes done at Walmart, but you can't get a mortgage at Walmart. They're complicated, but that's where I come in as the professional is I want to come in and educate and show you the inner workings of how a reverse mortgage works. There's not a lot to them. I mean, they're just, they're just like, you know, you hear about, you talk about a forward mortgage, a forward mortgage, simply put, you go borrow a hundred thousand each month, you make a payment and your principal balance goes down with a reverse mortgage. It's just the opposite. You say, hey, I want to borrow $10,000, but I don't want to make a payment. So now next month, you owe $10,000 plus what your payment would have been. So now you owe $10,300. And then it just grows like that. And it's nobody's going to lose their house. All it is is you're just using up your equity before you pass on or before you sell the house. So it's not like, oh, they're going to come in and take my house or anything like that. It's just, hey, I've got a house that's worth $500,000. I've borrowed $100,000 against it with a reverse mortgage. Great. When it comes time to sell the property, it's no different than if you had a forward mortgage on it. You owe a, the bank $100,000. You sell it. They get their hundred. dollars You or your heirs get the other four hundred. dollars and they even got safeguards in place for that, that when we set up the mortgage, there's rules and limits on how much you can borrow 
based on your age and the value of the house. So they put those safeguards in place specifically so you will never get upside down in your house. You'll never go, oh, y'all, I can't, they're going to lose the house because, you know, I owe 700000 on it, but it's only worth five hundred. The government has got safeguards in place when we set up the loan because everything's based on your age and the value of the house. The older you are, the more you can borrow because they go off of, you know, tables just like an insurance company has. You know, this is your lifespan. If you get to 70, you're going to live to 85. They have all these tables already in place to make sure that you don't get in over your head. You know, I think a lot of the horror stories that you hear about reverse mortgages and things like that, I think a lot of it is misinformation and just people who aren't educated on the ins and outs of them. The other nice thing about them is that because they are ran through FHA, the Federal Housing Authority of the government, they have insurance on them, basically. So let's just say you happen to get one and, you know, all of a sudden the the real estate market collapses and nobody saw it coming. All of a sudden your $500,000 house is only worth a hundred thousand. You will never owe more than the house is worth. Meaning at that point, they're not going to come back to you and say, Hey, you died. You owed us 300,000, but the house was only worth one. They're never going to come after you for the difference. They're never going to come after your heirs and go, Hey, you're still on the hook for the other 200,000. So there's, that's why I say there's a lot of safeguards in place. One, they're never going to want you to get upside down. And two, if something catastrophic happened and you did manage to get upside down, there's stop losses in place to make sure that you're not, oh, hey, you owe us the difference because you did wind up getting upside down even when we had all the safeguards in place. So your, you or your heirs are never going to be on the hook for the difference of something bad happening. Yeah, and I think that's one of the you know things that's really interesting most people don't know about with reverses now, or it's like, you know, a lot of people say, oh, the bank takes the house, like they own it outright and all this. Yeah. I think there were some old programs years ago when they were first kind of out we're talking 30, 40 years ago, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and a lot's changed. And and the reality is, as I talk about the change in demographic, there's not enough 55 plus communities, whatever right. community or facility that is, to move a lot of these aging seniors into. But I think just within the senior realm of housing in general, there's typically a lot of myths, you know, just right. things with assisted living and memory care and it just it really comes down to everyone's individual needs, you know, and and just kind of their and health and finances. And it's I, I think the question I have for you, what type of client it would obviously over sixty two should get the reverse mortgage? And that's a great question. But you know, I kind of it's like when people ask that, I I go, you know what? It's all individual based. You know, there's not, oh, this is the perfect scenario. And that's why I take an individual approach to lending in the sense that one size doesn't fit all. And, and a reverse mortgage is not always the best option. That's why I have access to the first and second mortgages or whatever best fits your situation. But the reality of a reverse mortgage is it's just, it's, it's like a giant credit card, basically. If you need the money, you know, when you get to that point, and your choices are, oh, wow, I need the money or I got to sell my house because you've got all this equity tied up in that house. So your last years of your life that should be, you know, the best years of your life, do you want to go and say, oh, well, I'll have to sell my house and go live in a little apartment or whatever versus doing a reverse mortgage, so to speak, and allowing you to stay in your house until you, you know, pass away. So. I mean, it, it, it's, there's not a good, oh yeah, this is the best thing. And that's what I say. You just gotta, you gotta take every client and just, you know, judge them on their own merits and judge them on their own. Hey, what do I want to accomplish? 
And then we worry about, okay, what's the right product to get you to accomplish that? It's very individual-based lending that says, what are you looking to accomplish? And then working it backwards, so to speak. Once they tell me, hey, this is what I want to accomplish, then I say, okay, well, let's do it this way to accomplish what you want to accomplish in the, in the best manner. What do you see as a common, and we've already talked a little bit about this, but I think it's important. What do you think is a common myth with reverses that we haven't talked about that you'd like to myth bust? Myth bust. Um, again, myth bust is one that, oh, I'm going to lose my house or any of that. Not going to happen. So any of the myth, any of that stuff about losing your house or becoming destitute over it or owing more than you've even got when all the dust settles. So all of those are the big myths. And the other myth is, oh, well, then my heirs will never get it. My, you know, or, oh, they're going to take my house when I die. No, that's not going to happen either. The only thing that's going to happen on death is the lender is going to come to your heirs and go, hey, guys, you got a you know, $100,000 bill here. How do you guys want to sell, sell it? If they say, gee whiz, we love mom and dad's house. We don't want to sell it. Then they say, great. And we can go get the, the, the heir a forward mortgage. We can convert it and say, great, we'll just convert the 100000 You can keep mom and dad's house. Or they can say, hey, I got $100,000 down here at the bank. Great. Send it to the lender. Now you own the house. So the bank is never going to take it away from your heirs either. It's just you've got a balance on it. No different than if you had a forward mortgage and you died. The bank had come to your heirs and go, hey, Mr. Heir, mom and dad died. They owe us 100000 How do you want to handle it? Either refinance the loan into your name or sell the house or give us some cash you got sitting at the bank. All those are options and on the table, you know, upon you passing away. Right, right. Yeah, I think some people get just nervous in general with bills, right? And that's, yeah. that's probably why some of that's exaggerated and they're dealing with, you know, right. the big transition anyways. And, you know, and to follow up on that too, I mean, the bank don't want your house. I mean, that's a, the other misconceptions. People like, oh, blah, blah, blah. They're just, they're just after my house. No, they're really not. Because if they take your house back, now they got to worry about selling it. Now they got to worry about insuring it. Now they got to worry about upkeep on it. So yeah. the bank only takes houses as a last resort. They they don't want your house, you know. And so if you say, hey, this is how we're gonna, you know, handle it. Yeah, the banks only take houses as a last resort because they don't want them. Yeah, because they lose money. They want to work it out. Yeah, they want to work it out. They lose money. It's headaches. They have to worry about upkeep. They have to worry about then turning around and selling it because they're, you know, they're not in it to acquire housing. If they were in it to acquire housing, they just go buy the house themselves. They're not in this to, hey, we want to acquire houses. That's, mm -hmm. that's not what banks do. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. It's kind of, I know, couple guys that still do reo work and right. just <laughs> i mean they people really don't know yeah they, they really don't understand and no. it's like no they really don't want your house because it's a total yeah. pain and they you know what like they don't they really it don't is. It's, it's 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 it, when a bank takes your house it's the bank is taking on a bunch of headaches yeah so it, it was I the last you, year yeah yeah i promise you the bank's not sitting around like this going oh i hope we get that house back you know? Well, yeah, they compare it to repoing a car, which even then like, they don't want to repo cars either. No, you know? but, but it's the same problem. Hey, you haven't made a payment in six months. We got to do something, you know? Yeah. But yeah, like I said, with reverse mortgages, there's safeguards in place. You're never going to owe more than it's worth. And all that's going to happen upon your death is they're going to come to your heirs, just like if you had a forward mortgage and say, hey, guys. There's a lien against the house. What do you want to do about it? Yeah. Great. I want to refinance it. I want to pay it off. 
I want to sell the house and then pay you off and keep the difference. Yeah. And that's, and that's all that's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think we covered a lot of really great things about the, that area you focus on. Last thoughts on reverses that you wanted to share with everyone before we ended up going. You know, last thoughts are just basically, they're just another tool in the, you know, a tool in the tool belt, another arrow in the quiver. You know, it's just, they're there for the right situation. If it's not the right situation, you don't go, oh, hey, I've, you know, I'm 65. I've got to do a reverse mortgage. No, if you need a, you know, maybe a smaller amount or you want to, hey, I'm making enough on social security or my retirement that I just want to borrow some money and pay it back down like a normal loan, that's okay too. The reverse mortgage is just a, a very niche product for a very specific situation that works very well when it fits the borrower. So, you know, they're good when they're needed. They're good when they're used correctly. And, you know, that's, that's the advantage too with me is if you go to a guy that just does reverse mortgages, even though it might not quite be the right thing for you, he's going to try and just, yeah, close enough. Let's get you into it, you know, versus with me, it's, hey, if it ain't the right thing, it ain't the right thing. If it is, then it's there and available. I don't ever have to put somebody in a product that's not the best product for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I have to look at myself in the mirror every morning. That's, that's the main thing is just the reverse mortgage is a very good product. That's been, and like you said, 30, 40 years ago, yeah, there were some glitches in it. But the good news is in the last 30 years, they've all got those glitches worked out and, you know, things of, hey, this ain't working, this ain't working, great, let's tweak it, let's tweak it. You're really dealing with a good final product now that has a very good track record as well as a very good thing to keep you in your house Versus, oh, I got to go live in my kid's basement because I had to sell the house or something. So it's a great way to make those last years of your life the best years of your life because you can stay in the home that you spent 30 years paying for. I think that's great. I, re I really like the point you made. And then, and then we'll wrap up about really being able to do other mortgages because then it prevents you from having a bias. You can give them yeah. And so then you're, yeah, I, I, re, I never thought of that point. That's a really good point. Well, yeah. thanks so much Brent, for coming on the channel. Of course, we're going to put your information in the description box below. Folks, if you have any questions, how what's the best way to find you online and reach out to you? I mean, you know, obviously you can call me on my phone number, 801-390-3316. That's just, you know, I'm always available. That's my cell phone number. It's, you know, on me 24-7. I turn it off when I go to bed. So don't feel bad if you call at 11 o'clock and I answer. I was up anyway. So, you know, online, my, you know, my, my website is www.lenderforlife, L-E-N-D-E-R-F-O-R-L-I-F-E dot -E -E org. And, you know, that's what I want to be is your lender for life. We, we, we do something now and in 10 years you come back and go, hey, Brett, that was great then. What do we do now? Because your situation is going to change. Your, your goals are going to change. So I just want to be there with you for the long haul. When you need something, you call me. When you have a question about what you're doing or what you're already in or, hey, I got this in the mail. What about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm your guy. You just call me and I'll make sure that you understand whatever it is that you don't understand. So, folks, again, information is going to be in the description box. Please like, share, and subscribe. Reach out to Brett if you have any questions. Comment below. Thanks so much, Brett. We'll see you next time. Th stay on the Zoom. When I, I'll stop recording, but you can stay on the Zoom, okay? Right. See ya. Sounds good. Thank you.